uh, in this part we'll have the first few slides in completing uh, session one and the last um, uh, number of slides will be regarding on what is required to have your college accredited for uh, um, as a medical school uh, according to the International Federation of uh, Medical Education uh, following the year 2023. Dr. Arf. Shukran, Dr. Riva. So we will uh, continue. Um, uh, we stopped at the assessments and how we use the uh, innovative and creative ideas to overcome some of the obstacles. Um, uh, so um, I think Dr. Adil will ask the question about the time free um, or time dependent uh, based uh, time based uh, program or the, and the competency based. So these are uh, a simple three differences between the two systems. So the traditional time uh, based is uh, mainly focused on knowledge acquisition, whereas the competency based on knowledge applications. And we talked about Miller's pyramid and how we focus on the tip of the pyramid. Second is we target rotations here time flexible. I'm talking here about the time free. Uh, competency-based medical education. And then the driver here, the teacher, but we, we, uh, uh, we spoke about the learner uh, and how they can be uh, proactive and take the leadership. So if in a simple uh, spectrum here, we get time-dependent, time-free. However, the Canadians came, came up with an interesting new system they called hybrid competency-based based time rotations. Okay, and this is, you know, where with the postgraduate medical education, we do um, give fixed number of rotations to all students or uh, residents. So they mainly use months or blocks. So the month is a, uh, is a month, calendar month. Block is a 28, day, uh, 28 days, four weeks. So the year has 13 blocks. The year has 12 months. So different, different systems. However, we, now we are more flexible though, because I don't know where the block and month has came from to say, yes, you need uh, one month for each specialty. So who knows? Maybe we need two weeks. Maybe we need six weeks, maybe, and so on. So now the flexibility within the time frame. And the reason is, if you let it completely time free, there are a lot of challenges, uh, either at the government level or the, at the university level or the, at the program level because the government cannot play a plan for their human resources, for uh, uh, contracts, salaries, budgets, um, they, uh, programs, they can't uh, have a clear plan on when each student will finish. Uh, stu students, they can't plan for their subspecialization and fellowships or apply for uh, jobs and so on. So the Canadian is, uh, 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 we can say a little bit with, uh, within a fixed time. I'll go very quickly with this, but basically this is the time dependent, this is the hybrid, which is uh, resembles the Canadian, and time free. So past rotations, these two are, um, are the same, and then this is where it's become a time as a resource to achieve competencies. So use the time as a resource, in, in term, uh, and instead of having it completely irrelevant. So that's probably the key understanding uh, uh, one. Um, same thing, I'm just going to go a little bit faster here. Be, it's, uh, everything is available on the internet uh, for these differences, but uh, again, time dependent, we talked about it. If the student or the physician is ready for um, the exam, uh, then that's the, probably the ultimate goal of the training program. And uh, the ownership, uh, the learner's ownership in both, uh, but uh, so it's the same here. Now, this is this, uh, the third part of the uh, presentation, uh, and uh, the reason is uh, there are two uh, sides of this. One is the, there are, uh, uh, because of the competency-based medical education and the new changes, now we, uh, we need to change the accreditation requirements. Uh, and the Canadians, especially the postgraduate medical education, they came up with the new accreditation standards and a new accred accreditation system and technology. And then the second part, we'll talk about the, then, uh, the big subject of the uh, 2023 accreditation that's required by the WFME, uh, World Federation of Medical Education, uh, and which uh, uh, they say that they require all international medical schools to be accredited and recognized by the WFME in order for their uh, students or graduates to uh, practice and apply for practice in uh, North America. 
so we will talk about the two subjects. And I'll go, first, I'll go briefly and describe uh, an ideal learning environment. So uh, each environment uh, has a student and a teacher or tra trainee or trainer, and they all work within an environment with tons of requirements and multiple of requirements, and each one of them will require time, people, effort, uh, effort and uh, support. Uh, just to give you an idea how robust is training right now and uh, how many people are involved, how, how many resources are needed to uh, achieve uh, a well-recognized uh, working uh, training program. Uh, and in addition, there are government and certifying bodies that oversee the whole process. When you do an accreditation, you target all of this, basically, just to give you an idea how robust is the accreditation process, and that's why it takes a lot of time. And that's why even the uh, preparation at the level of program or medical schools, they, um, they do require time to, to be ready uh, for, uh, for accreditations. Um, another example how robust is the training, uh, this is an example of uh, uh, my residency program committee when I was a program director. Uh, it's uh, just a one specialty out of 50 in one university out of 17. So uh, the program director, and then the, you have res resident representatives, you have an associate program director, program administrator, site representations. Each site you have one staff. This is the resident representative, and then the research simulation on IT, you have the chair chief, actually the department is a member, and then the fellowship coordinator, and we created a new one which is called this competency by design lead as we moved on to change things to uh, competency by design. I report to chair chief and associate dean of the university, and then as a preparation to the CBD, we created more subcommittees uh, so that we involve more people in the planning process, and we c try to capture um, uh, uh, challenges or even positive uh, uh, things early on in the training. So evaluation subcommittee, academic mentoring, academic uh, curriculum subcommittee, uh, QI subcommittee. This is QI in education. It has nothing to do with the clinical QI. The goal is to see if this QI uh, group can monitor the work of this group, especially knowing the fact that we will be running two different systems in the same time. So currently now, because the new residents, they're doing CBME, the older residents are using the traditional cohort. So basically we're running two. And, and because it's new, innovative, creative idea in medical education, there could be a potential for uh, research and publication as also. Selection subcommittee, and then the Royal College asked to have competence committee, what we, t we talked about it, uh, earlier today. And then we created the CBD working group to work uh, on the CBD as we go on and monitor the change also with the QI subcommittee and the CBD lead here. So just to give you an idea how robust now is the training and how much uh, now the modern training systems focus and uh, invest, uh, how much they invest on uh, training. So this is the can, what we call the CANRAC, that's the new accreditation system, the Canadian. Uh, it's the state of the art, it's digi digitalized, and uh, it has very easy access, and it aligns with the shift toward competency-based medical education. Basically, it, ha it targets five domains. Again, just remember that slide with the learning environment and how many stakeholders are involved, but each one is uh, categorized under one of these five uh, domains, so program organization, education program, resources, learner, teachers, and administrative personnel, and continuous improvement. This is the, probably one of the biggest changes in accreditation that it's one of five focus in CQ, CQI. So you have to uh, teach uh, continuous improvement, you have to have a continuous improvement group, you have to show the accreditation group that you did quality improvement, and that quality improvement resulted in uh, change or an action or feedback. So I'm not going to go in details, but this is just uh, each domain has standards. The standards are um, numbered uh, in sequence, so they don't belong just to the domain. So standard one and two, they are about the program administration. And then domain uh, the education program starts from standard three, um, and so on. These are the requirements. 
Um, domain uh, resources, same thing, that starts uh, by standard four. The delivery and administration of the residency program is supported by appropriate resources, and they target everything you can see. Uh, they, they, it's very robust and very detailed process, I would say. Um, then the, the uh, fourth domain, the learners and teachers, it has, I think, five domains or three, uh, yeah, four. So one, two, three, four domains there. And then the last domain here about the CQI, or continuous improvements. Um, and then this is what they, they you, you show them, you plan, you do, you study and act, which is very well known to the QI people there. Um, and I just, I, usually, I ask this question uh, when I, whenever I come here to Libya and just to uh, feed the thoughts about, because it was interesting to me to see the multiple postgrad medical education training programs and the, um, the practice of creating new um, programs every time I come uh, to Libya and visit. So I'll give you two examples here where a very excellent system is focused on quality and not quantity. Number one is Braham Flexner that I mentioned in my first few slides in 1910. He was asked to evaluate 168 medical schools in, in the United States and Canada. After the evaluation, he ended up by closing 50% of them. So that's a huge number of medical schools, uh, closed them. So they do focus on quality, uh, not on numbers. Uh, same thing in uh, 1858, after the establishment of the GMC, uh, when, they met, when they went through the requirements for medical schools, they found that a lot of medical schools, they don't meet the criteria and they closed them. So um, uh, we shouldn't rush into uh, um, uh, producing more uh, graduates uh, and not paying attention to the quality. Same thing here, this is an, uh, another interesting article, uh, are med medical school graduates prepared to practice medicine? Okay, and if you, if you look carefully in our medical student graduates with our uh, infrastructures and uh, our lack of uh, many standards of training programs, I think the question should be asked, uh, should we allow students to practice on their own as general practitioners? Or should we follow the North American uh, model of uh, uh, the mandatory uh, subspecialization? So the shortest uh, usually is family medicine, is two years in Canada, uh, and then uh, depends on the specialty. It can range from five to seven years. And that's my question there. I think it uh, needs to be discussed. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe uh, it's possible that we can allow people here in this type of environment, uh, this side of the world, but at least need to be discussed and uh, we have to make it very clear. Now, this is the uh, challenge and that uh, big subject now, uh, most of international medical schools, they uh, discuss and they uh, uh, try to understand well. Uh, basically, uh, the, um, the WFME, which is the World Federation of Medical Education, um, has, this, uh, they requested that all medical and medical schools to be accredited in order for the medical schools to be recognized by this group, which is medical school accreditation requirement for uh, education commission foreign medical graduates. So basically now, if our medical school is not accredited or recognized by the WFME, our graduates cannot go in the United States here and enter your, their USMLE and practice in the United States. So that's what triggered the issue there. However, the WFME does not accredit. They have their agencies, so they do recognize accreditation agencies. And those agencies do accredit uh, international medical schools. Um, and uh, th that's why in um, uh, the current uh, recognized ones that close to us is one in Sudan and the other one in Turkey. Uh, there are other um, organizations or uh, programs that they apply to the WFME, but their application is still under process. So that, uh, there's one in Egypt, from Egypt, one from United Arab Emirates. Um, there's one, I think, from the French-speaking countries, Tunisia and Morocco. Uh, so 
uh, if in order for us to be accredited or recognized by WME, so we have to contact one of those agencies. Or maybe we create our own agency at some time. Uh, it's not a, an impossible job. So something we also think of and consider. Uh, uh, the WFME requires nine um, areas of accreditation. And uh, there are total 35 sub-areas. Um, so they divide to two things, basic medical education, each one of them will have requirement for basic medical education, each one of them will have quality development standards, okay? There are 106 basic standards in total and there is 90 quality improvement. And there are 127 explanations or innovations, so that they need, just they try to explain and make things very clear to you as a document. I'm going to go back a little bit in one slide, which should have been after the slide. This one here, okay? This is an interesting work that was done the first time in Libya in 2018 uh, with the uh, support of the European Union and WHO, where they screened uh, the medical and light health education and training institutions. They didn't, it's not a very um, formal accreditation uh, survey. But they did uh, apply the WFME standards uh, to three universities uh, in Libya, uh, uh, Tripoli, uh, Benghazi, and uh, Omar Mukhtar. These are the 106 I told about, the basic. And the blue means they achieved, OK? The orange is in progress. And then the other ones are not achieved in the gray. So although Benghazi, University of Benghazi is doing well compared to the other two, but this is a very small number. They, achie they achieved 33 out of 106. Uh, they have 54 in progress, uh, but there's still, uh, I think there's still a long way to go uh, to achieve all of this. So uh, they haven't tested the other universities. So there could be other universities uh, who can um, uh, meet those requirements. These are the quality uh, standards, uh, and I will talk about the difference between the two. But this is an interesting study you can find in the internet. Uh, and there, there are a lot of uh, numbers and data and information that can be useful to any uh, medical education institute in, uh, in Libya. So the basic standards are expressed as a must, whereas the standards for quality of are expressed as a should. And whenever you try to apply those standards or uh, to study them, you should pay attention to these two words. Interestingly, same thing applied to the Canadian accreditation system. Same thing. We, uh, we look at must and should. Okay? Must that you have to have. You, there's no um, excuse. Should, basically, it's better to have. So they and the WFME document did not, they don't explain well, but I borrowed this from the Canadian because I'm familiar about the document and where I can find it. But the use of the word should indicates that meeting the standard is an attribute to be highly desirable and an evaluation will be made as to whether or not its absence may compromise substantial compliance with all of the requirements of accreditation. So you can't just say, oh, this, they're not must. I shouldn't do them. You're sitting at the edge there, okay? So you can't just ignore all of them. You have to do them. Uh, I would say you have, but it's better to, to try to apply at least as much as you can out of them. And if you want to, uh, you to be an example, then always aim high and try to achieve all of them, okay? Um, I'm, I'm gonna go, this is my last slide, okay? But I will go, I'm just gonna show you the document. So I'm just gonna stay here beside the computer. Um, I don't see the document here. It's not reflecting my, uh, my desktop, but basically uh, there is a, a, a document which is available in the WFME website. Uh, it explains the details of the process, the requirements. Uh, my intention was uh, to uh, show it on the screen and go through the pages. It's 60 pages, so we can't discuss all of it, but uh, just to show you examples and how, uh, if I go back, uh, let me uh, use my uh, PowerPoint. Uh, um, if I go back, I'll show you examples how they used uh, the must and should. I want to show you 
how, for example, mission and outcomes, how it contains the basic standard, how it contains the quality improvement, and what explanations they made. But I think if you read it, you can, you can read your 10 minutes, okay, yeah. Uh, so I think I am done, but this is a very serious uh, subject, uh, needs to be taken very serious and studied, discussed. Uh, 2023 is a very sh uh, short time, uh, so uh, it's a very important subject to be studied nationally or at the level of universities. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Chad. Um, thank you again, Dr. Arif. I think uh, hopefully by um, end of July, early August, we will have a workshop for which all uh, medical schools um, or at least interested parties whether teaching staff or, or deans of medical schools and members of the Ministry of Education will be invited and will be most welcome to participate, uh, whether nationally or even, even internationally if, uh, if the need arises. Uh, we have a few minutes for uh, some questions, so uh, the floor is open. Uh, what will happen uh, in terms of uh, European? Uh, they, they're not, not going to commit to the... World Federation of uh, Medical Education. Uh, I mean, can you go to, to work in Europe if you, if you fail, if your medical school failed, not recognized by ECFMG? Will it be recognized by, uh, recognized by European standards or not? Um, for, for now, it's just the, uh, the American, and I think the, the American cases, there's some overlap between the two. Uh, what's, what was said informally, that what would people in medical education think that they think Europe will follow. But currently, no. Um, you still can go to Europe and, uh, and practice or apply for certification there. But um, everybody would think that it makes more sense that you pay attention to the institute uh, that graduated that candidate who is applying to you. So. There is a dual recognition between the UK and America, as far as I know, from, uh, for uh, at least post-graduation degrees. Uh, you think that will, will, will be nullified? If the, the, so someone who's fully um, um, trained in the UK with certificate can go to America and he'll be recognized. Is, will, will this be no longer the case? Uh, that's an excellent question. I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the case is still there. So. Uh, at least in Canada, because I understand the Canadian system, we do recognize few trained training systems in the world. So the uh, British, the Irish, the uh, Australian, the New Zealand, the South African, those people we recognize their training and they actually they can apply for the, the, the Canadian board. So because we pay attention to the training and not to the uh, exam itself. Now, uh, Dr. Rida's question is, let's say if somebody coming from Libya who, from a school that is not accredited, went to the UK and now became a consultant from UK, can they be accepted in the United States? So that's a very excellent question. I don't have an answer for that. Okay, my question about uh, any student that's already accredited. And uh, he's graduated from Libyan University and he's accredited there and he finished his Canadian board. Is there any chance that he will lose that accreditation or not? I don't think so. Because uh, once that uh, organization gives you the green light, then that's done. We're talking about the process to achieve that. So I think it will apply to the, uh, to the new applicants. If you're already uh, being accepted, then most likely you'll be okay, you'll be fine, yeah. Uh, finally, if you're watching this on YouTube, please uh, press like or share so that uh, others will be able to watch it and hopefully benefits, uh, the benefit will become more uh, generalized. Any more questions? Thank you very much indeed. Again.